Okay guys, so welcome to the five W's of CTF. Now, before I get started, I wanted to let you all know that the slides are available at yctf.lopunk.com. That's because this talk is full of resources and full of links, but I don't want you just basically blogging my entire talk throughout the process, so the work's been done for you. Now before I get started, I guess we should go ahead and introduce ourselves. My name is El Marquez, and I really struggled with what to put on this slide. Like my first instinct was to do alphabet soup and tell you all my certs and why I'm important, and I'm like, you know what? That's not what you need to know about me. What you need to know is that I am a professional noob. Now, maybe that's not legitimately my title, but it pretty much should be. You see, I'm the community architect for a bunch of companies you can see at the bottom there, Linux Academy, Jupiter Broadcasting, and Operation Safe Escapes. And really what I do is, oh, sorry. Hi. <laughs> really what I do is I podcast about trying out new open source technologies, whether that be trying to build out a web page or distro hopping every two weeks. What you will notice is that there is absolutely nothing on this slide about security. So if I'm gonna come up here and talk to you guys about CTFs, you may be wondering, why did I choose to do that? That's because this talk is what I wish I would have gone through a year ago, when I kept making excuses going, you know, when I get better at development, I'll do some web app penetration. When I get better at security, I'll try a CTF. But to add a little bit of legitimacy to my talk, I thought I would invite one of my InfoSec mentors up here. So Lou is kind enough to join me. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Lou Stella. I'm a senior security analyst at Rackspace. Uh, I wear a lot of different hats there. Uh, I do DFIR and threat hunting on a day-to-day -day basis. And then, uh, you know, I, I dabble in uh, all sorts of other stuff. Um, I'm also occasionally a podcast guest. Um, so maybe you've heard my podcast, but probably you haven't. Um, there will be a link at the end. Uh, feel free to check it out. So I guess we should go ahead over what we're going to cover today. And if you remember anything from your third and fourth grade English class, you're going to know exactly what we're covering. That's because we're doing the who, what, when, where, and why of CTFs. Who plays CTFs? What in the world is a CTF? When and where would you play one? Why would you spend the time? But throughout it and at the end, we're primarily gonna focus on that elusive six W that no one tells you about. And that's the how in the world do I do this? So Lou, why don't you kick us off by telling us who plays CTFs? Sure, so can I get a quick show of hands of the folks in the room who here in their current day-to-day -day job is uh, doing ops work, sysad, DBA, okay, big group of you. Uh, security operations folks, okay, and uh, just developers. All right, good chunks. So uh, the fun part about CTFs is there's something for all of you there. Um, anyone can play a CTF and get something out of it. Um, there's a lot to be gotten out of CTFs whether you win and come in first place or not. Um, so, you know, it's easy for us to tell you that anyone can do CTFs, but I'd like to sh kind of show you that anyone can do CTFs. This is a photograph of junior high and high school students playing the very first CTF that I competed in, and that pervades uh, Jeopardy style CTF. I'm gonna tell you, these kids, they didn't ask, you know what, do I know enough to play the CTF? Or wait till I get a job in InfoSec, then I can do a CTF. They just jumped in and started learning. And let me tell you, they were some good competition. So with that being said, I think maybe I should address the big question of what's a CTF? Because I think I've said that word about 150 times at this point. So CTF stands for capture the flag. And when you think about that, you probably think about maybe football or paintball, where you have two teams who are against each other. You've got blue and red with flags in the back of the field. And your job is to get through the other team, get that flag, and bring it back to your team for victory. I'm going to tell you, computer-based ETFs maybe aren't that exciting to watch, but they definitely are that exciting to compete in. You see, all CTF is a contest where you're going to be presented with a bunch of challenges. One thing to note is that they are challenges that challenge your technical skills, your creativity, and even just your problem-solving skills. A CTF allows security enthusiasts, not professionals, enthusiasts, to test their skills against one another and really kind of allow them to learn from one another. That's because most CTFs will allow you to join in as a team. No one in this room knows everything about technology. Don't kid yourselves. But together, we become a community that can play on each other's strengths and learn from them. So why do they call it Capture the Flag? 
because there really is a flag that you're trying to capture. And it'll look something a little like this. Now I've borrowed P Pico CTF's flag format, and you're gonna be going through perhaps logs, going, doing some web app penetration testing, and looking for the magical letters Pico CTF, and within that section, there's gonna be a flag. Now some of you may be sitting there going, Elle, I'm sure you're a great speaker, but you're about as clear as mud right now. Well, yeah, let me walk you through the process of capturing your first flag. So here's your challenge. Can you convert the number 42, base 10, numbering system that most of us use, to binary base two? There's a few of you that might be going, I really don't do binary and I don't even know how to get started with this. Well, how many of you have played the game 2048? Really? All right, we've got some people. All it is is a tile-based game where you're trying to match numbers up to 2048. So two plus two equals four, four plus four equals, you know, I'm not gonna lead you all the way to 2048 here, guys. <laughs> So we're gonna cheat a little bit. You know what, you're allowed to use paper on this test. So let's get a number line going. I'm trying to get to 42. We know 64 is too big, we don't need it. 32, I'm gonna need one bit there, okay? So if I do 32 plus 16, I know that's 48. Don't need that bit. 32 plus eight is gonna give me 40. We're getting closer. 40 plus four is what? 44, so we don't need that. 40 plus two, we're there. We don't need any single digits. Guess what, guys? You've now captured your first flag. Congratulations, you can go do CTFs. It's as easy as that. Now there are a few different parts of CTFs. For example, let me tell you a little bit about the first CTF that I did, and that was a Jeopardy-style CTF from Pervade.com. When you think of a Jeopardy-style board, you think of something where you could go, you know, Alex, I'll take what's a CTF for 100? Very similar concept, the board just looks a little bit different. So you'd say something like, L, I'll take the US for 20 points. Now I'm very thankful for Pervade for providing me these um, screenshots of their competition. But we're gonna use a little bit of uh, Hollywood magic and do kind of like our crime sci-fi uh, sci shows and go, you know what, we need to enhance. <laughs> so your challenge for this flag is, your counterintelligence team informs you that a botnet is being used to control your low orbit satellites and manipulate high resolution photos in order to evade detection. Ooh. You discover that the botnet is being controlled through an administrative C2 web interface that requires authentication. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to access the administrative backend and obtain a key to disable the botnet. If you're like me, when I first clicked on this, I went, oh God, what does that even say? Like, I know some of this English, but you know what, I was already in the room and there was a bunch of high schoolers showing me up, so I thought, let's give it a try. I go to the webpage, and as is expected, my access is being denied. So I thought, okay, it's saying that I'm using Firefox and I should be using Hawk 2.0. Why don't I just go and download Hawk 2.0? It should be simple enough to get the information, right? Okay, so maybe Hawk 2.0 is in a real browser, maybe I'm not smart enough to use their GitHub webpage, but I can tell you that that rabbit hole led to nothing. So I went back to the drawing board. Came back and I stared at this page. How does it know that I'm using Mozilla Firefox? And can I make it think that I'm using something else? Well, you know what, I don't know much about dev, but my Google foo is strong. So I asked Google, is there a way for me to fake my browser client? Turns out there is, all I had to do was change my user agent. Now I'm not gonna show you the flag because I want you to go and do it yourself. However, I can tell you that once you do this, you can definitely catch your first flag. Now another type of CTF that we have is the attack and defense style. And Lou, you recently participated in one of these styles, right? Yeah, I did. And uh, they're, they're a little different than, than the Jeopardy style that we see a lot. Uh, they're a lot of fun. Um, if you wanna hit that, yep. So uh, the Pros v. Joes style CTF, um, if anyone in here is a college student, uh, CCDC is basically the same style of event. Um, where you, you as, as a, a individual contestant are, are allowed to form a team and you have to defend a network from someone that's attacking it. Most of the time it's a, a group of professional penetration testers and uh, red team folks that, that are doing the, the attacking. So you, you see real real world uh, techniques and tactics used against you and what, what do those look like from the blue team side? So you may be asking yourselves, okay, maybe I'm interested, but where can I get started with playing CTFs? Now, 
there are a lot of places, and I'd strongly encourage you to get active in your hacker communities. Austin has a huge InfoSec community, and many of them run CTFs during their meetups, as well as form teams to do CTFs like this. Hack the Box is one that Lou and myself have recently kind of started playing with, and we're gonna go kind of a deep dive into that in just a bit, but I wanted to highlight a few others that could be really helpful in your careers. The first is Over the Wire. This is one of my favorite because it will start you from I know how to turn on my computer and go to a web page. That's my limit of my tech knowledge. They will walk you how to, throw, how to go SSH into a server. They have an entire CTF based around teaching you how to use the man pages. There are plenty of us that need to learn how to use the man pages. The next one is CTF time. This one is actually bookmarked within the top of my bookmark bar because they give you real live access to what CTFs are open right now, what prizes are they giving, because let's say you know, some of us are prize motivated, and what target audience is it? Are they for advanced, are they for high school students, are they open to anyone? Pico CTF is one that I've been using throughout this talk. It's my favorite. I'm just gonna be flat out honest and tell you guys Pico CTF is my favorite because it's targeted towards, junior, towards high school and college students but they don't discriminate against age and they let anyone join in. You're able to form a team and once a year they release their CTF and it's on. It's prize winning, let's win know, team against team. But when that's over, they leave all of the servers up. All of the challenges are up and you can go through it at your own pace. The coolest part about this is a lot of the teams do write-ups telling you exactly what they did to get that flag. So when I was learning how to do web app exploitation, I'd get to a point where I'm like, I don't know. My knowledge is not, does not large enough to be able to proceed on to catch this flag. So I'd go pull up a CTF and I'd start learning. And I'd get about as far as I could and I'd read a little bit more and I'd go back and I'd hack some more at it. It was a way that I can tell you that my knowledge has increased by bounds. And the last is the SANS Holiday Hacks. And this one I want all of you to remember because it's live right now. And as they're still sitting there going, yeah, I don't know if I'm ready. I don't know if it's for me. Look, I'm dressed as an elf, standing up here, <laughs> telling you there's your ticket. Santa wants you to join in on this CTF. So why would you bother spending the time? I know that a lot of you are really busy. You know, Lou, what are some of the reasons that you decided to CTF? Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's a tough question to, to answer, especially for those of us that work in a blue team role or, or we work in security. Why would I want to take time when I'm not at work and do the same type of things I do at work but not get paid for it and, you know, not, not have any of the same satisfaction that, you know, you get when your boss says good job. <laughs> So, uh, you know, meeting new people and going, especially CTFs that are running at events like Texas Cyber Summit or uh, DEF CON or, or Black Hat, uh, you know, the networking, the, the being in the same room as all of the, the other contestants is really great because there's so many smart people in our community. And if you don't go and put yourself out there, you won't meet them. And there's so many different types of CTFs that gives you the chance to break into things that maybe you don't do at work. So maybe you are a SOC analyst and you respond to and triage tickets for, for web scans all day, but you really want to get into threat hunting. Well, there's several CTFs out there that are designated for, for threat hunting. Like that's what the whole challenge is. And then, you know, learning other new skills. I didn't know how to decompile an APK before, before I went to a, a CTF and you know the whole challenge was finding Android malware and I'd learned. So you know there's, there's a lot. So we're about halfway through this talk and we've covered some of the how but I think it's really important for us to spend maybe the majority of the time kind of getting you set up for success when it comes to CTFs. So we're going to focus on that elusive 6W, the how. Enter the challenge that I just went through, called Hack the Box. When I said, you know what guys, I am tired of pretending to want to be an InfoSec. I am tired of making up all the excuses, I'm in. How do I get started? And I had at least six people go, go do Hack the Box, it'll be great. You're, you used to be a sysad, you'll be fine, go do it. So I go to the webpage and I'm greeted with this, and I said, oh, I, I need an invite code. So I call my friend up and I'm like, hey, can you give me an invite code so I can start playing too? They proceeded to laugh and hang up the phone. 
I thought like, man, what? Like, do they really not believe in me? Is this a joke? So I call another friend up and I'm like, hey, you told me that I should do CTFs. Would you mind giving me an invite code? And they're like, L, it's Hack the Box. And I'm like, yes, that's the one. Can I get an invite code for Hack the Box? L, it's Hack the Box. Oh, I have to hack the box to get, yeah. So there's your first hint. Now, at the time, I'd been playing with learning cross-site scripting attacks, so I thought, I got this, don't worry about it. Yeah, they called me out on that pretty quickly. That's one of the cool parts of Hack the Box, is it's been around for a while, they know what to expect, so they're kind of constantly changing their environment to keep you on your toes. Now, this is DevSecOps, so I thought, why not throw a little bit of code in here? So this is a great example. So I said, all right, next thing that I'm doing is, I'm gonna take a look at the code for the page. Maybe there's something in there when I notice something a little strange. Invite API to JavaScript. I, I don't know JavaScript, but you know what harm ever came from just clicking a random link, right? So I clicked the link, <laughs> and I saw a bunch of code. Now, I don't know how to read JavaScript, but I can read English, and there was some English on that page. Verify invite code, make invite code, then this is how I generate it. All right, let me try to make the call. What's the worst that can happen? I end up with a random string of text. I don't know what this is, but I can read English, as I said, and I see that it's encoded in base64. Now, I told you guys, my Google Foo skills are great. I got myself a base64 converter. There you go, we've got more English now. It says, in order to generate an invite code, make a post request to API invite flash generate. I can do a post, and if you can't, your Google Foo should be strong as well. So we use curl, and I make the API request, and I end up with another code. Like I said, I'm not going to hand these invites out to all of you, but you should know everything that you need to know to get your invite now. I will also say that they really do change these around, so yours might not be base encoded with 64, or base 64 English, but it's gonna be something very similar. So you, at this point, should be able to capture your flag and get an invite to Hack the Box. Now, all of your uh, flags are not gonna be based just around API exploitation or web-based exploitation. There's actually a bunch of different tactics. This is when joining as a team can be really successful to you because you can have people who have strengths in different areas that can kind of help prop each other up and teach them. For example, here's one in cryptography. I am not gonna give you the answer for this. There's where it's located, yctf.elopunk.com. Go figure it out. When you figure it out, whisper it to one of us and we'll let you know if you're right. It's a simple Caesar cipher. Don't overthink this, okay? Um, another version, Blue, would you like to take this? Yeah, so steganography. Uh, it's the concept of taking confidential information and hiding it in images or text, basically in plain sight. Uh, so we have this Jackson Pollock-esque uh, color chart thing. Oh, <laughs> what useful information am I going to get out of that? So it turns out uh, you start separating them out by colors and you find a three in the blue and a four in the green and a five in the red and off you go. You've, you've extracted the hidden information. So we also listed binary and web exploitation on there. I have held your hand and walked you through these. So let's bypass them and go to one of my favorite. That's OSINT. Open Source Intelligence Gathering. Now guys, I am going to take advantage of having a captive audience right now, and I've got the mic, so we're gonna do some good here. I wanna tell you about a CTF that is growing basically by the day. There's new ones coming up all the time, and it's called tracelabs.org. And it's where you use your powers to do good. Let me introduce you to Edward. He's a real life missing person. Trace Labs takes real life missing cases and sets you to be the detective. I spent days going through his Twitter, his Facebook, going through Craigslist ad, trying to find where his last known whereabouts was. Could I find a picture, a post anywhere that led me to believe through the metadata in that photo that it was posted after the last time the police think that he was found? Was, uh, Trace Labs has, uh, I guess two of the records said that they have managed to find two missing people and you know what, it's not even about that. The families are happy that they're getting out there, that they're being advertised, that more information is being brought. So everything that you find will be collected and reported back to the correct authorities. 
These skills might not seem that important to you, but think about what good you can do. It also lets you look to see what is it that you're posting? What information are you leaving in your photos? What is it that your family and friends are posting that you might not want them to? And getting this information already furthered my career because I was able to go to um, Operation Safe Escape and say, I have these skills, can I help? And now I'm volunteering with helping victims of domestic violence who are being targeted through tech. Capture the flags can help change not only your life, but other people's as well. There's also forensics as a category. Yeah, and I mean, that's like a super broad word to describe all of the different types of things here. Um, you know, a lot of different CTFs will have a uh, memory analysis or a, uh, a, di a like a disk analysis sort of uh, challenge component to them. Um, but that's not all we mean when we say forensics. Um, Splunk puts on uh, their Boss of the Sock and Boss of the Knock competitions at their annual uh, conference. And I'm told that if you buy enough t-shirts from Splunk, uh, they will come to your office and put it on for you too. Um, and Splunk uh, Boss of the Sock is a really cool competition where they you know, give you access to a Splunk instance with all of the data already loaded into it. And they say, go find the evil. And there's some hints and, and questions along the way, but it uh, really teaches you, one, how to use their product, which is probably why they really push it. But uh, you know, a lot of the great investigative skills that come with uh, Blue Team work. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, OpenSOC, uh, which is put on by a uh, company based here in Austin called Recon InfoSec, uh, OpenSOC kind of takes the Splunk boss of the sock a step further. So instead of just giving you a sim with all of the logs loaded into it, uh, OpenSOC has running live machines. And they feed all of the logs into Greylog for you. And you can search. And you can solve a good chunk of the flags just by searching through Greylog. But they also give you full packet PCAP, uh, full, yeah, full decrypt PCAP in Moloch. And they give you OS query. And you can query all of the endpoints that show up in the logs uh, via Collide. And they're really cool because all of the technologies they use to put on the competition are all open source. Uh, and then the last one is SANS NetWars. Uh, this is like a, a full-fledged cyber range, really awesome competition. Um, those of you that, are, uh, that raised your hand earlier when I asked if you were from security, though, uh, probably know the issue here. Uh, it's that first part, uh, SANS. It's incredibly expensive. Uh, but if, if you have a, a training budget at work or if you, you know, have have money burning a hole in your pocket, uh, SANS will take it, and they will really teach you a lot for that. So to wrap up, we'd like to leave you with a few different resources that you can use to further your career. Now, linuxacademy.com, yes, you know what? I'm employed by them, but I was a student much, much longer than I've been an employee. If you're sitting here going, well, when I know more, when I have more skills, let's stop sitting there. Go get your skills. Go and learn. And of course, I challenge all of you to take the Hack the Box challenge. And remember, you've got to hack your way into the invite. Blue, what resources would you like to highlight? Yeah, so OpenSOC, uh, if you check out their website, they have a calendar of all of the events that they'll be at. Uh, they are usually at B-Sides events within this area. And then they were at Texas Cyber Summit. And they'll, uh, they'll be at DEF CON as well. Now, L, I think we've gone through six of the five W's of CTFs. Is there any chance there's a seventh? All right, before we let you guys go, one more thing, <laughs> and that's the ever important write-up. It's one thing to sit there and focus on yourself and focus on your learning, but you know what? The write-up will help that too. The write-up has helped me be able to go back and look. I've been doing CTFs for just two months, like no time at all, and I can already go back and look at my notes when I first started to where I am now going, why did I document that? Like that's so obvious. But one of the cool things is, as people start Hack the Box or Pico, I'm able to send portions of my notes out to them and help them. Eventually, I'll get around to posting them publicly. But for now, I'm having fun just doing it. So write the docs. It's going to help you learn also how to document. If you're in this room and you raised your hand at any point when we talked about being a developer, let me tell you this. Document, document, document. Made it clear? All right. With that, we'd be happy to answer any questions you guys may have. Thank you. Thank you.